The Apollo Solar Generator Power Station is seriously changing the game permanently for the power station market forever. It is just not going to be the same now that these are here. My name is Ben. This is the Minuteman Prep YouTube channel. I test a ton of solar equipment. I love emergency backup power because in preparedness situations, it's the number one thing we all want. And using gas and diesel just isn't reliable long term. I got these units here so that way it could be the most prepared as possible for long term emergencies like post EMP or long term power outages for natural disasters, those kinds of things. I've tested dozens and dozens of units and I like some units, most of them I really don't care for, but the Apollo, which they call the Apollo 5K, but I could just call it the Apollo, has absolutely exceeded every one of my expectations. And so in this video, I'm just going to bring you through the last eight days of tests that I've been doing. This has just taken me so much time to run through all these tests because I want to make sure that it's good for me, but also for you guys as well. You have so many questions on how well these work. These two units here are set up in parallel, meaning that it's still 120 volts, but capable of outputting 50 amps. And then these two are in series, which means split phase. So I've got this in a 240 volt, 25 amp setup. So both of these setups right here, can do 6,000 watts output. In one of my next Apollo videos, I'm gonna be joining all four of these systems together and running my entire house for a couple of weeks, who knows? That's what we're gonna see, is how long these will actually run my house because with 43 kilowatt hours of battery capacity rated to 6,000 cycles since they're lithium iron phosphate, I don't know how we're gonna ever use that much energy. That's like two days worth of energy for us. That's even not using solar panels at all. If that was just battery, getting nothing from the panels. So this is a serious long-term emergency backup power system that we could literally run our entire house off of, and it's extremely expandable. So let's go ahead and get right into the test. This has been a long time in the making to get you these test results, and you're just gonna wanna see how good it is. Stay to the very end. There's some important information you don't wanna miss. So I've been running these tests for a few hours today already, and what I've got here is my Apollo 1 attached to my Apollo 2 unit. And what we've got is this wall charging and this wall charging from this. And the Apollo 1 unit is actually wall charging on this orange cord from the High Solus MPS3K, which is the unit that came out before the Apollo. So it's a few years old, still a really good unit, awesome battery expandability. It's got 1500 watts of solar input and a 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter, but it's got some old tech on it. It's not nice like this at all. And so that's where this comes in is this is the new update. Everything's so much better, but I've got this wall charging at around 700 watts or so. And then this is wall charging at about 700 watts or so off of this one. So pretty impressive. The MPS3K is running an air conditioner, this unit and this unit, and it's just running flawlessly. So I'm gonna run these for a few hours and just see what fails first to see if there is any failure point. Oh, this just went from orange to green. We are getting a good charge. Awesome. It's actually been six hours now, and this is at 100% and this is at 100%. This one's just on normal wall charging, so it had like 700 watts going in, and I put this one on fast charger at 10 amps. I'm gonna go ahead and switch that back and switch this to UPS mode now. But overall, these worked perfectly fine, zero issue. This was constantly pushing out like 15, 1600 watts, something like that. So that's really impressive right there. No issues at all. Very, very cool. Now both of these units are at 100% completely. It's about 745 in the evening. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna leave this inverter turned on all night long. And let's see here, we're in UPS mode, energy saver mode is off. And then on here, I'm gonna turn on the inverter, but we're gonna turn on energy saver and we're gonna see the difference of battery capacity in the morning. We'll just see how much energy it uses to be sitting here drawing capacity. It says it's currently at 55.4 volts and drawing 0.24 amps. And this one's 54.6 volts at 1.42 amps. So this is using roughly 70-ish watts to have the inverter on. And this one is using like 15 watts roughly to have the inverter on. So we'll see what happens. It's almost eight o'clock in the morning and we have the first unit at 97%. The one that was set to eco mode and the one that was not on eco mode is at 85%. So we lost just over 1% per hour with this just sitting here like this. So the eco mode is definitely very impressive as far as its energy savings. We saved, there's a difference of 12% here, 
But the coolest thing about the eco mode is that as soon as it recognizes there's an energy draw, it turns off eco mode and starts running the equipment. And the purpose of that is so that it doesn't just sit here running the inverter for no purpose. That's why this is gonna be such a huge energy saver. I see why they call it that. I'm topping these two units off. This one's just on normal wall charging in UPS mode, but it's outputting like 1600, 1700 watts to this, which is in AC fast charge. And right now it's getting 14.6 amps. I have it set to 15 amps here on AC fast charge. I just think it's really cool that you can choose how fast you want it to charge. The only downside being that you can't turn on the inverter when doing AC fast charge. So that's something to be aware of. Now the app is really easy to use, but it doesn't have 100% full control that you do on the screen here. Hisolus did mention that they are working on eventually having a new upgrade to the app. I'm not sure when that's gonna be available, but I got these two devices right here. It's really easy to add them. I had to make an account and then I just connected to them wirelessly through my internet. And so now I can monitor these anywhere in the world as long as they're on my internet. And as long as these are running my internet, and since I use Starlink, basically my internet doesn't hardly ever go down. So I can monitor these all the time. I can click the same icons and get the same information just like if I'm clicking here, but I don't have the same control as in to go to change the settings to go from UPS mode to AC fast charge or anything like that. But I can switch on and off eco mode or energy saver mode. But it's really good for monitoring and having small controls over the AC output and the DC output making sure those can turn on and off. And you can change the names of the units, but it doesn't change the name up top here. So I'm not sure why you changed the name. So seems like there's still a couple of things to work out with the app, but the app's working and that's great. I can get all of the information right here and know exactly what's going on. Now, I just found one issue with the energy saver mode. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off energy saver right now. And you can see that my watt meter has turned on. Now it's only pulling about two and a half watts that's because I've got it hooked up to a portable air conditioner. And that's just to turn on the indicator light that it has power. What I was told about the eco mode or the energy saver mode is that that's its flaw, is that if it's below about 15 watts that it's trying to draw that energy, it's going to fluctuate because there is just enough energy trying to come through saying, hey, I need energy. But because it's below 15 watts, it doesn't want to send out the energy because it doesn't want to turn on the inverter. So that's one of the issues with the eco mode or the energy saver mode is that it does work for higher demand items. But if it's just drawing a little bit like less than 15 watts, you're not going to be able to run it. I'm going to turn on energy saver and show you what's happening here. Well, this was beeping just a second ago, but you can see down here on the extension cord that it is flashing because it's getting little bursts of energy because it's trying to ask for that energy. But then because it's below 15 watts, it's actually not turning on the inverter. I apologize for the lighting. I can't control the sun. I can harness the sun, I just can't control it. So now I'm gonna turn off energy saver mode. See, it's pulling about three watts. So now the air conditioner is gonna kick on. It's running 40 watts right now just to run the fan. And on here, it's showing 39 watts on the output. Right now we're getting a power factor, it was at 93.5, that's pretty good. 91.5, 60 hertz exactly, right out of the outlet, pulling 120.4 volts. Go ahead and unplug this. Need to reset the inverter, we're at 1%. The alert is W12. W12 is battery is depleted. That makes sense. I'm gonna clear that, turn off DC. Stayed at the same voltage the whole time, that's really good. See if we can get AC on just to see what this output. Yeah, cool. We can still turn on the AC and we got 4.86 kilowatt hours out of it. Nice. So this test is going to be a little bit different. I've got two units here. They're in parallel, which means I'm 120 volts at 50 amps. They're already set up in communication. I have my portable air conditioner plugged into this. It's about an 1100 watt load. And the test is how does the battery sharing capacity work? Because on my Delta Pros, on any other system, if one unit is draining faster than the other, they stay out of balance and they do not rebalance. One will drain all the way down to zero before the other one does. So I wanna see how these balance between the two. So far they're equal, they both started at 100%. This one just went to 96%, this one's at 97%. This is showing the output here, this one is not. And you can see that here, we've got about 1100 watts, zero watts, the communication and load sharing all happens in the back of the unit. But I'm gonna track this and just see do these drain equally all the way down or do they start load sharing at like 20% or something like that?
These drained no problem simultaneously. This one was at 32%, this one's at 29%. I had the load on here, but it was sharing the load between the two and the batteries drained almost equally. That's really nice that it's able to do that. You can see back here, I've got the AC charger or the AC input on this unit here, but nothing on here. We're gonna see if while charging, we can get this unit to charge this unit at the same time. While charging, it is charging up both of them. You can see that the percentage has gone up on both by a basically equal amount. This is still 3% higher than this one. So now we're gonna do the same test, but with solar panels. Everybody knows about the shock hazard that was with the original Apollo. This, I've done all the volt testing with my voltmeter touching things. I cannot get any voltage output from the box. There's no voltage leaking. I can't iterate that enough. I have not been able to find a single instance of voltage leak. And I know at High Solus, they did some extreme testing where they even purposely damaged some uh, other units so that way they could see if they would get a voltage leak. Still, no voltage leak. And to make sure that everyone's being safe, because we're dealing with high voltage here. It's 120 to 500 volts. This is high voltage, it's dangerous stuff. It's really fast electricity. And so High Solus has included this breaker box. Now it's slightly confusing because green means you're safe and red means that it's energized, meaning that there is energy coming through these wires. So don't get that mixed up. Green means no power, red means power. Basically, this is just a switch to make sure that you can't get hurt. And you wanna make sure that the long end of the cable, see this is almost four feet right here. This long end is what's gonna go into the back of the unit. And the way that I remember that, besides just remembering the long side, is that I wanna be able to control it from the front. So if this was backed up against a wall, this is designed to be long enough to where this is hanging out the front. So that way you can have that control right up here. You're not gonna hurt yourself. This is set here so that way you have that protection. So I'm gonna plug in right back here. Also just make sure on the back here, see I've got the red cable. This is my positive coming in from the solar panels going into the positive right here. Just make sure you line up that positive sign with this red. Because these are MC4 connectors, you literally can't shock yourself. This is over overkill in terms of protection for people. But nonetheless, they wanted to be overkill with the protection, so there you have it. All right, I've got my Fluke voltmeter here. This is the uh, commercial or industrial grade one. I can't remember, it's, it's like 1500 volts or whatever it's rated to. So you have basically residential, commercial, and industrial ratings. So this is the industrial one. So I've got 10 400 watt solar panels connected, and I've got 340 volts coming in. This is high voltage. And the test we're performing here is to see if this will charge both units at the same time from DC power now. So all I'm gonna do is switch this on. There's our beep indicating we've got power coming in. So far, we've got 3,300 watts. I have 4,000 watts connected. These are the solar conditions I'm working in. There's actually a storm coming. You can actually see the storm off there in the distance. It's coming our way. And so I've got these clouds here. It is three o'clock in the afternoon. So that is the end of solar peak hours. These are some stands that I put together. This is not my permanent setup. I, this is all just for testing, but this allows me to test different panels and different configurations during the winter and have all the snow fall off. It makes it really easy to take care of. So I've got 10 400 watt panels on it that I have running into it right now. So it reached as high as 3,500. Now we're down to 2,300, 2,400. It's gonna fluctuate obviously because of the clouds right now. So this unit on the right is at 35%. This unit on the left is at 38%. And you notice the time up here in the corner, it says 1502, so that's military time for three o'clock in the afternoon. And we're just gonna see how much this will charge for just a little bit and if it charges both units. Charging with solar, no problem. So you can see there's no AC input. We're getting 30, almost 3200 watts in right now, about 3150. This is at 46% and 46%. So this battery is caught up a little bit to this one. And right now they're at the same. And I still have my inverter turned on. I can still be running equipment. And I didn't say it earlier, but you can wall charge and solar charge at the same time. The test that I'm gonna do now is the dark start. So right now I'm gonna go into settings and I'm gonna turn on unattended mode. And it's going to supposedly turn back on when it reaches 30%, you see the blue 30% just turned on. And I do have this set up in multi. So it's using the two Apollos and the two batteries here to run whatever load that we've got. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run the air conditioner. I'm gonna run this all the way down until it automatically turns off. And then we're going to see if it automatically turns the inverter back on at 30% and starts running the air conditioner. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna drain these down. We'll see how it works tomorrow. The solar input is fluctuating quite a bit. We're getting about 2,400 watts right now. We're at 17% on this one, 16% on this one. I'm actually going to change this to rather being at 30%, I'm gonna change it to 20% on the unattended mode. So that way we can see if it kicks back on, it should turn on the air conditioner all by itself. Well, that was pretty fantastic. It turned on all by itself. I didn't have to do anything at all. And I can see that I've got 3,700 watts coming in right now and that the air conditioner is using about 1,200 watts of that. So I'm still now charging because we do have a break in the clouds right now, it's sunny. And so I'm able to run the air conditioner and be charging at the same time. And I was able to monitor everything on my app right here. So I can see I'm pulling almost 1200 watts. I'm getting about 3,700 watts in. So I was actually on my phone and watched this turn on all by itself, which is pretty cool. You can see it's absolutely pouring again. The rain is really coming down and this is supposed to be the next leg of about the next 24 hours of nonstop rain. So I'm not gonna get much out of the solar panels. But you can see, even though this little finger is flashing here, we are still charging this up. These are still in parallel in the multi setup. These are still working together without any issues. So I'm able to get this charged up. In the middle of the rain, I'm getting 80 watts of solar input. The clouds are quite dark. Obviously, you're not gonna get good solar input in the middle of a rainstorm, but I am getting 84 watts, so that's pretty cool. At minimum, this would be enough to probably offset like a refrigerator if it keeps at about 84 watts. So if I was running a single refrigerator, maybe it would be a good setup. Outside of that, definitely still happy with the results here. Now, if you're wondering what this cart is that I'm sitting on, this is the off-road cart. I don't even know if I'm supposed to show anybody this or not. So this is an off-road cart. These are 300 pound rated wheels, which means that this cart can actually carry 1200 pounds, at least according to the weight limit on the wheels. This has the exact same cart setup as you do down here. However, it's designed to go over rough terrain. And I personally moved an Apollo across a huge bed of rocks, like huge boulder type rocks. There's a bunch of big round river rocks. And I was able to move the Apollo on this exact cart without any issues at all. Very cool that they made an off-road cart. The extra nice thing about this cart is that it's higher up off of the ground which means actually putting it on out of the box and stuff like that is just a little bit easier. But overall, I still love these carts here and I highly recommend getting a cart with every Apollo. Now you're not supposed to put more than one battery in one unit or two batteries on a single cart. I think you can actually go up to three batteries on a cart. The issue really becomes with its top heaviness. They don't want anyone accidentally pushing it over because not only could that damage the unit, but it could also hurt somebody. So make sure you're not stacking it up too high. I got a lot more testing. This video, that was lightning. Oh, wow. I've got a lot more testing and reviewing to do this unit. And in my next video about the Apollo, we're gonna start running the whole house. I've gotta move the solar panel array to where I'm most likely going to keep it. Man, the thunder is just going crazy. But I want to make sure that I'm testing this thoroughly. So far, it's pretty much past everything that they've advertised and I haven't had any issues. I like that it's got the filter built onto the front here and that I can actually clean the filter. I'm gonna keep the inside very clean, which I like that, especially RVing. Uh, when I'm RVing, I usually put my solar generators down below the bed in the master bedroom. That's one of the things that the fan is so quiet, it's not gonna be a bother, but two, I also like to open the little cargo door so that way it gets good airflow. And then that can be a lot of dust because people are driving around on dirt roads and stuff like that. A lot of dust can get in there. So I like having the filter built in. I just, I love it. There's still lots of testing to do and I'm gonna put all four of these units together and I've got videos on how to set these up and I'm showing you all the different kits and how you can set them up. A shameless shout out right here. If you guys want one of these systems, just email me at info at and I'm gonna help you figure out exactly what system you need for your goal. You need to define, do you want something that's just for emergency power or something to run your entire house, or you just start with something small that's just for a fridge and freezer and eventually build up to running your entire house. That's what this is good for. And because the batteries are rated to 6,000 cycles, 
It's gonna last for freaking ever. I'm super excited. I'm also gonna be using these at my off-grid cabin, especially because of the dark start. The dark start is incredible for just being able to keep everything running. Even if we have a long period of bad weather, then they'll turn off and kick back on automatically and continue running everything without any problems. I absolutely think it's a winner. Two thumbs up for me, five-star review, and I will let you know if I find any issues with it. All of that's gonna be here on the Minuteman Prep YouTube channel, so I appreciate you. I'll see you on the next one.